Hi there. This is a quick video about a change in the PowerMons calibration procedure. Let's say you want to measure the discharge curve and the capacity of a battery like here. Naturally, the battery is on the supply side of PowerMon with the red terminals and the load resistor on the yellow or white load terminals. You have verified that the low voltage limit is set to avoid damaging the battery and start the run. But are we actually measuring the battery voltage? As you know, the INA219 actually measures the voltage on the low side, called bus voltage in the datasheet. Not to worry, you can change this to the supply side in the setup and all is good. But since the INA219 doesn't provide supply side measurement, what actually happens is that to get supply side voltage, the software has to add the voltage drop over the shunt to the load side bus voltage. This is an extract of the recording of this run. You can see that jump here. That's when I changed the setup from load side to supply side. What this means is of course that you should do these configurations before starting your run, but also that calibrating the bus voltage to 10 millivolt accuracy as in the last PowerMon video isn't all that useful if you then add possibly up to 300 millivolts of uncalibrated shunt voltage to it. This brought me to the obvious conclusion that I really ought to calibrate shunt voltage as well, or at the very least have a look how accurate it is, out of the box so to speak. This is my setup. A 1 ohm load resistor is connected to the load side and the power supply on the top is set to current limit at 20 milliamps at the moment. The Solatron 7150 Plus multimeter is directly measuring the shunt voltage while the blue BM235 measures the current. However, I'm not interested in the current in the moment, so ignore the readings and apart from bus voltage, all other prior calibrations in PowerMon are turned off. For ranges A and B, I step the current limit up in 20 milliamp steps which translates to about 2 millivolt shunt voltage change and note the reading on the Solartron as well as the PowerMon, which is shown in millivolt with an ohm symbol behind to indicate that it's the voltage drop across the shunt resistor. For range C, I step in 5 millivolt increments and for range D in 10 millivolt increments. By the way, I did a previous run comparing the shunt voltage readouts on the PowerMon when switching ranges at various currents and found them to be pretty much identical within 10 microvolts, which is the least significant digit. This is a huge time saving by reducing the number of test steps from 172 to just 72, because I don't have to, for example, measure the same 10 millivolt shunt voltage first in range A, followed by B, followed by C, and finally D. This graph shows the result. The red arrow line is almost horizontal at about 2%. This means the error is large enough that it should be compensated, but also that it can be easily fixed using the same slope and intercept method I explained in the previous PowerMon video. Here is a brief recap of that method. We basically take two pairs of measurements, one on the INA219 chip in the PowerMon and one by a reference DMM. One pair is for the low side of the range and one pair mm. covers the high side. Using these four values you can then calculate a slope and an intercept value which become the calibration data. With these, these two values and that formula here you can then correct the measured INAX value to become RefX. I used the previously measured values shown in blue and red to try the effectiveness of this method by selecting two pairs, calculate the slope and intercept values and apply the correction. Then I used the corrected value again to calculate the difference to the reference and the error. These new values are shown in yellow and green. You can see how that the error is now very close to 0% and the difference hovers just around the zero line. This uses just slope and intercept values across all four ranges and it seems to work just fine. I'm not so sure if this is always the case and maybe my chip is just exceptionally good. 
After all, the programmable gain amplifier may have some difference between ranges. So maybe it's better to do separate calibrations for each range. I should also point out that the measurements and the calculations did not use the shunt resistor value or the current flowing through it. This means we can get a calibrated and highly accurate shunt voltage independent from both. This got me thinking. If we now had a calibrated shunt resistor as well, PowerMon could calculate accurate current values by simply dividing the shunt voltage by the shunt resistor value. This has a number of implications. On the left is the existing calibration. I have added the shunt voltage calibration because we definitely need it in any case. On the right is the new method which I have now implemented. It is significantly less calibration work and adding a new shunt resistor just adds one calibration step instead of four. The consequence is that the INA219's current calculation is actually no longer used. This means you could leave the complex CalREC and CurLSB calculations for the CalData text file at zero. I don't recommend going that far because who knows if there are any side effects of leaving the zero. Yes, the datasheet says it can be done, but I do recall the same datasheet saying that filter resistors had no effect on accuracy and we know how this ended. This is the content of the new calldata.txt file. As before, the 1.0 and 0.0 for slope and intercept means no calibration, so the measured values will be used unchanged. The bus voltage line is exactly as before. The shunt voltage calibration is on a new line with four pairs of values, one pair for each range A, B, C and D. The example here has four shunt resistors. As before, each shunt resistor definition starts with a friendly name, which you can edit to something meaningful as long as it doesn't exceed 8 characters. The name is followed by the nominal value in ohms, that is the value the resistor should ideally have. New is the next field, which is the actual value in ohms, that is the value the resistor actually has. Don't worry about this, this is filled in by PowerMon when doing calibration. The rest of the shunt resistor definitions are the four pairs of CalREC and CurLSB values. As I mentioned, you could just put zeros in there, but the little utility I mentioned in the previous PowerMon video can be used to produce these values. Another time-saving thing you could do is just performing the shunt voltage calibration for range D and then edit the CalData text file by hand to copy the D range slope and intercept values by hand into the positions for range A, B and C. At least for my INA219 chip this would work just fine without any noticeable loss of accuracy. To calibrate the shunt voltage there are a couple of options. If you have a power supply that can deliver up to 3.2 amps in constant current mode, the simplest approach is this diagram, which is what I was using. Of course you only need one DMM instead of two. This diagram shows an alternative way to calibrate a shunt voltage that does not need a beefy power supply. The trick is to disconnect the internal shunt and replace it with a much higher external one. I selected 10 ohms, but the actual value does not matter, nor does its accuracy. The 10 ohms together with the other resistor of about 460 ohms creates a voltage divider. Again, the value is not critical and the current is comparatively low, but note that for the highest range the 560 ohm needs to handle about half a watt, so possibly use two normal 1.2k resistors in parallel for that one. The procedure is the same as before, but in this circuit you need to adjust the power supply voltage instead of the current to get the target shunt voltage. In case you wonder, there is no need to enter the 10 ohm shunt into the CAL data file. We only use it temporarily for this setup and as I explained the shunt voltage calibration is independent of the actual value of the shunt resistor. Selecting the calibration menu and shunt voltage A for the first calibration. The target displayed on the upper left of the PowerMon display is 2 millivolts. 
Now I adjust the current until I see 2 millivolts on the Solartron. And press cell to move to step 2 and the new target of 38 millivolts. These are incidentally 5% and 95% of the range. Adjusting is quite fiddly and can take a long time, so for brevity in this video you see me accepting values that are slightly out. Pressing cell finishes the calibration for shunt voltage A. Repeating the same for range B. The new target is 5% of the B range, pressing cell to get to the higher target of 76 mV. And so on for range C with ranges with a target of 8 mV and 152 mV. And to range D with targets of 16 mV and 304 mV. The setup for calibrating a shunt resistor. For this you need a power supply that can generate 1 amp. The current is measured by the BM235 and by the Solartron 7150 Plus. However, since the Solartron's current range is out of calibration, I use an external 0.01 ohm shunt resistor with 0.1% tolerance and the Solartron measures the voltage drop across this shunt instead. This means that the target of 1 amps reads as 10 millivolts on the Solartron's display. With this method I can get a better accuracy than with the BM235 alone, but of course you could use whatever reference instrument you have to verify that the current is exactly 1 amp. The idea here is that given that the shunt voltage has been calibrated already, if you flow a current of exactly 1 amp as measured with an external and accurate instruments through the shunt, PowerMon can then use the shunt voltage it sees and the known 1 amp current to calculate the actual shunt resistance value that would produce the seen voltage drop at 1 amp of current. Selecting the calibration menu and going to the shunt entry shows the target of 1 amp. I use the power supply to adjust it as close as possible to 1 amp which means 10 mV on a Solartron display which corresponds nicely to the control on the BM235. Pressing select finishes the calibration. We can see the current readout now is exactly 1 amp. And this concludes this video on PowerMon. The updated source code for this version is already available as version 4.3 in my GitHub page. Links are in the video description below. Thanks for watching.